Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Maria Goretti, virgin and martyr. Born in 1890 in a small farm near Ancona, Italy, Maria Teresa was the third of seven children of a poor family. Her mother describes her as being happy, good, open-hearted, without whim, but with a sense and seriousness beyond her years and never disobedient. The Gretti family became so poor that they had to abandon their own farm and work for other farmers and share a building to live in with the Serenellis, as Giovanni Serenelli, a widower, and his son, Alessandro. Maria's father died when she was nine, making life all the more difficult for the Gerettis. The mother, Assunta, had to take over her husband's work in the fields, and Maria was left at home to take care of the domestic chores, uh, the younger siblings, and uh, also um, some of the neighbor's sibling, uh, uh, children as well. And all this she carried out with great uh, fidelity. Alessandro was a young man with hardly any religious formation. He had developed many bad habits you know, as a youth, including drinking, swearing, and looking at indecent pictures. You know, eventually, he made advances on Maria. All of them, you know, she forcefully resisted. And two times, he tried to rape her, you know, but Maria violently refused, reminding Alessandro, no, it's a sin. God does not want it. But Alessandro continued. On July 5th, 1902, Alessandro was determined more than ever to rape Maria, uh, and this time, uh, she, um, she again resisted, and fought him off bravely, but Alessandro you know, went into a fury and stabbed her 14 times. Now, clinging to dear life, Maria was taken to the hospital nearby Nettuno, where the doctors tried to save her life, but she could not be saved. The next morning, Maria received the Atticum, and after much suffering, she died peacefully in the Lord. Her last words were, I forgive Alessandro Serenelli, and I want him with me in heaven forever. She was just 11 years old. Alessandro was sentenced to 30 years in prison and spent the first years unrepentant. In 1910, during his eighth year in prison, he was to be a changed man forever. In a dream, Maria appeared to him, surrounded by lilies, you know, white lilies, symbol of purity, and then presented him 14 of those lilies, one flower for each of the times he stabbed her. Alessandro was moved to conversion and repentance. Peace flooded his soul, and he began to make steps you know, towards virtue and holiness. He was released from prison a few years earlier for good conduct, and once released, the first thing he did was to find the mother of Maria, Assunta, and ask her for forgiveness, which she readily granted, saying, if Maria forgives you and God forgives you, how can I also not forgive you? It was Christmas Eve when they met, and that night at midnight mass, they went to mass together, and received communion kneeling side by side. Alessandro would eventually be received among the Capuchin Franciscans as a tertiary and uh, help them out as a porter, a gardener, uh, carrying out various odd jobs, and uh, becoming well known for his holiness of life. He died in 1970. On June 25th, 1950, before a crowd of half a million people you know, gathered in St. Peter's Square, the largest gathering of its kind you know, up until then at St. Peter's Square, Pope Pius XII canonized Maria Goretti, calling her the St. Agnes of the 20th century, the sweet little martyr of purity, and proposing her as the patroness of modern youth. 
Her mother, Asunta, was there present, and this is the first time in the church's history that a mother was present at a canonization of a mother's child. Also present were four of the remaining siblings of Maria and uh, Alessandro as well. By turning to St. Maria Goretti, you know, as an example of virtue, especially of purity and chastity, and by invoking her powerful heavenly intercession, you know, we too can overcome all the various you know, temptations that we might experience that might come our way from the culture of impurity. You know, so uh, relevant is St. Maria Goretti in today's world, not just for youth, but for, but for everyone, for we're all in need of growing in, uh, in the virtue of purity. We can also look to St. Maria Goretti as a wonderful example of forgiveness and mercy. And perhaps this is something that's overlooked, but was brought out, I think, very beautifully during the Year of Mercy just a couple of years ago. You know, and um, with the relic tour of St. Maria Goretti here in the U.S., she was being proposed as a, a, a great uh, example of forgiveness and mercy. Indeed, indeed she was. And um, as someone we can look to to cultivate these virtues. You know, divine mercy worked so powerfully through St. Maria Goretti, you know, especially by you know, changing Alessandro, her killer, you know, from a great sinner that he was, and to a very holy man. In fact, there is a movement in the church that is promoting Alessandro you know, Serenelli you know, uh, as a candidate for beatification. Now, wouldn't that be marvelous you know, if he became a saint someday? You know, such are the wonders and miracles that divine mercy can accomplish. So may each of us you know, be vessels, instruments, and channels of this divine mercy that further wonders and miracles might take place in our world. Praise be Jesus and Mary.